What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to configure AWS Glue to run locally with PySpark for VS Code on a Windows machine. Recently I made a video configuring AWS Glue locally to run on PyCharm, but I got a lot of comments that it would be great to have the same tutorial for VS Code, so here we are. By the end of this video, you'll be able to run AWS Glue jobs locally in VS Code without having to spend any money on DPU costs. I'll be configuring this with Glue version 4.0, and I'll be following the AWS documentation which can be found in the description below. If you want to follow along, the requirements for this tutorial are installing Docker, Git, having an AWS account with an IAM role configured to interact with data in the cloud, Visual Studio Code installed, the Python extension for VS Code, and the dev container extension so we can interact with the Docker container from VS Code. So here's the IAM permission you'll need if you want to test your configuration locally with the sample glue job I have uploaded to my GitHub repo. First step is to pull the AWS Glue 4.0 Docker container. But before we do that, if we right click on the Docker desktop app, assuming you've already installed it, we want to make sure that we're using the Linux container. So, so since I've already switched to a Linux container, it's a switch to a Windows container. All right, so to pull our Docker container, we're just going to pass in the command. So it's going to be Docker pull Amazon slash AWS dash glue libs glue libs 4.0 and let's just give that a run i'm just going to speed up the video a bit because it takes a while to download and this could vary depending on your internet connection okay great so the pull was complete and if we were to open up our docker app we should now see that in our local repository, we have this image that is pulled. So now we can see we have Glue 4.0. Great. So in order to get this image to work successfully, we need to make sure we right click on the Docker application and go to settings. And we want to make sure that we have selected the second check mark, which should be expose daemon on TCP localhost 2375 without TLS. Now, from my understanding, this step isn't required for a Mac, but this tutorial is for a Windows machine. So we're going to make sure that this is selected. So if you don't have this selected already, you're going to have to hit apply and restart to restart Docker. Okay, now that that is configured, the next step is to configure our Python interpreter to leverage this Docker container. All right, so if we open Visual Studio Code, we want to first make sure we have the extensions we need. So if we click on the extension tab on the left hand side, we want to make sure that we have dev containers installed and the Python extension installed. Great. So now that we've confirmed we have the two extensions that we need, next we want to update our workspace with some key value pairs in order to have the right Python interpreter path being specified. Now it says to do this step in the documentation. However, I'm not entirely sure it is needed if you're working within the dev container itself. But what we have to do is if we go and hit file, let's go to open workspace from file. So if you already have an existing project, if we double click on that, you'll see your existing workspace file. And what you want to make sure that we've added is the Python default interpreter path and the Python analysis extra paths. So I've updated this value to be specifically required for Glue version 4.0. So it might be different if you're looking at the documentation because I think that's referencing an earlier version of AWS Glue. And if you need to find out where this is, this can be found on the Docker repository for the AWS Glue repo, which will have this linked in there. I'll also include a link to it in the description below if you're having trouble finding it. But next, we can configure our Docker container. So I'm just going to open up command line here. And I'm going to pass in the following command. So what we're going to be doing is running our Docker container. The first parameter is going to be where our AWS credential file is. So if you want to pass a specific profile to the Docker container, this is where you have to specify it. So this is where my AWS credentials are located. This path is going to be specific depending on where you have your credentials stored on your machine. And then this is where it's going to be going to in the Docker container. And then the next parameter is going to be the workspace location. So this is where the workspace location is on the Docker container itself. And then if you have a profile, I'm just passing in the default profile that I want to be able to pass in. 
Now, if we don't pass in a profile, we won't be able to connect to your specific AWS environment. And if you needed to pull data from, let's say, an S3 bucket, then we won't be able to do this. So I highly recommend passing in a profile if you need to interact with your AWS environment in any way. Then there's some additional information. So I've disabled SSL, I've set the port numbers, and then the name of the Docker container itself. And then finally, what the, the Docker image that we're gonna be using. All right, so if I give this a run, you'll get this error if Docker is not running. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start Docker and then try this again. All right, this time I have Docker running and I'm gonna run that command again. Great, so now it looks like our Docker container is up and running. Okay, so now if we go into our dev container extension, you might see that nothing is here, even though our Docker container is running. This is because I had Visual Studio, Studio open already. So I'm just gonna close it, and then let's just open it again. Okay, great. Now if I go into Remote Explorer here, it's going to reload and now we see that container and any other containers that we had will now appear so this is the one we've created together here and we can see that the status is running which is good now the next step is to right click and attach it to our current session so in the documentation it says attached to container but i don't see that option i see attached to current window so i'm just going to click attach to current window here next if we click the drop down for the workspace within the container now we can add a Python file to test to make sure that we can write and execute glue job successfully. So on the workspace, I'm just going to click new file. I'm going to call it first glue script .dy. And I'm just going to add the script that I've already created before this. You can find the script on my GitHub repo and I'll include a link in the description below. But what we're doing is we're going to be creating a dynamic frame from a sample data set that's in AWS S3. And then we're going to simply retrieve the results to make sure that we are able to get data. All right, so all we have to do is now just run our script. And if everything was set up successfully, should be able to successfully run this glue script within the Docker container. All right. Great. So what we're seeing here in the results is we're actually getting data being returned. So we've retrieved the first five records of our PySpark data frame. One thing that's really cool about developing glue jobs within VS Code is that it will automatically detect the functions and classes. So if I did glue.context and we should be able to see all the different methods available to our class. It definitely makes the experience much better for a developer versus writing it in the AWS Glue console. Before we end this video, I want to take a moment to give a special shout out to our video sponsor, DoubleCloud. If you haven't heard about DoubleCloud, DoubleCloud is a platform to streamline your data analytics infrastructure. You can save time by building data platforms with zero maintenance, open source solutions in minutes. The platform is cloud agnostic, so you can run these services in AWS, GCP, and coming soon to Azure. From ingestion to visualization, all integrated and fully managed. DoubleCloud provides managed services for ClickHouse, Apache Kafka, Apache Airflow, as well as a cloud agnostic no code ETL tool and visualization tool with ChatGPT integrated so you can get insights faster with AI insights. You can check them out and learn more by clicking the link in the description below. So now that we have tested VS Code with our AWS Glue Docker container successfully, we can now go ahead and start writing Glue jobs locally. If you're interested in how to write unit tests for Glue jobs, I got you covered and you can find a video in the description below. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on working with data and AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.